You may have heard of elderberries being used in jams, jellies, or wine. Elderberries are a little bit smaller than a pea. They grow on bushes and are harvested by cutting them off in bunches like grapes. They're a native plant, so they're really well adapted to this climate. At the farm between in Cambridge, John Hayden thinks an elderberry bush is the perfect plant for Vermonters to have at home. What we like about them is they'll grow well in marginal soil, so some of the heavier soils where other fruit won't thrive. So they have a nice little niche there. So that's, uh, we're, we're using them to plug into areas where we couldn't really grow other fruit. There's a lot of talk about them. They, people are joking, it's like the next big thing. Go east on Route 15 and you'll find Elmore Roots, where owner David Freed loves so elderberries so much, oh. he's written a rap. It's our elder, our ancestor, our wise old shrub, keeps us on our feet, brings us home from the pub. When he's not rapping about elderberries, Freed encourages customers to grow their own. They're not very fussy. The best thing is you start with a good sized plant with a good root system, plant it, not very deep, and keep putting compost and other rich earth from your garden around the base. Then they grow by themselves. We don't do very much, we just let them grow. Freed and Hayden's interest in elderberry isn't new. People have been cultivating elderberries to use as medicine for centuries. It's said elderberry syrup was the go-to elixir for old-time Vermonters who wanted to ward off winter colds and flus. At Rail Yard Apothecary and Yoga Studio in Burlington, herbalist Guido Mazze prescribes elderberry as a way to fight the common cold. As a clinical practitioner in herbal medicine, I've recommended elderberry countless times, and you have a couple of outcomes. Either the person just does not get sick when they're taking elderberry consistently, and I usually recommend it for folks who complain of getting sick, you know, three, four times every winter. They start taking elderberry consistently, and they find that um, that goes down substantially, and sometimes they don't get sick at all. So there's that. The medicinal properties of elderberries and its hardiness in Vermont's climate got researchers at University of Vermont to wonder if it was possible to grow elderberries on a commercial scale. Ginger, where are we? We are in the Intervale farm. And Ginger Nickerson works for University of Vermont Extension's Kyle Center Hayden for Sustainable Agriculture. This project was funded by the Working Lands Enterprise Initiative. We created these three different scenarios, a 40 bush planting, a one acre planting, and a five acre planting and um, looked at what the markets and prices would be for all of those different scales. And then we also created um, an elderberry decision tool, which is an online spreadsheet where you can go and you can plug in all of your own numbers for the enterprise that you wanna create and see whether that would be profitable for you. The market for elderberry products is still developing. And so commercial production is still a ways away. To increase the popularity of the fruit and get ahead of the curve, Nickerson suggests starting small. To start a commercial elderberry business, there's going to be a lot of upfront capital investment. And because that's not going to be for everybody, but the plant is still really great, we're recommending that people who are interested in it, but who might not want to make those big capital investments, they should still grow it, just growing it at a smaller scale. What's not to love about a plant that's purple and green, royal colors, and that gets rid of the virus in the common cold? Todd Hardy owns Thornhill Farm in Greensboro. His farming experience includes making honey. He learned about elderberries from longtime Vermonters and his friends Lewis and Nancy Hill. Lewis was a very kind man. He told me about the elderberries for 14 years, and I didn't hear him until I started seeing elderberry products come in from Europe made with white sugar. And I realized that we could do something made in Vermont with raw honey. And that changed our work with Honey Gardens Apiaries. The Hills developed two varieties, or cultivars, of elderberries which are unique to Vermont, Coomer and Berry Hill. For Hardy, growing elderberries is a tribute to his friends. Lewis and Nancy Hill are gentle giants of Vermont horticulture. Their books are in most every library. 
they wrote about daylilies, elderberries, black currants, flowering plants, and they were dedicated to Vermont, to Greensboro, and to horticulture. And Lewis knew how important the elderberries were, and he kept telling me about them. And it was a great way to diversify from being commercial beekeepers. And by mixing elderberries with the raw honey, the gift that Lewis gave us, we were able to stabilize our farm and um, make a really wonderful plant medicine. Elderberries are well suited for value-added products. At the farm between, John Hayden makes an elderberry, ginger, and honey syrup. The syrups retail for $15 for a 12-ounce bottle. It's a beautiful plant, so first of all, so if you're just in it for the aesthetics, it's beautiful to look at when it's in flower. You get these beautiful white uh, panicles of flowers that fill the bush. It smells great. Um, it's very diverse in terms of uh, you can use the flowers to make fritters or make syrups or cordials, flavor jellies, put in your hard cider. I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff with the flowers. It takes three to five years for an elderberry bush to bear fruit. Five pounds of berries makes about two and a half quarts of juice. As for care, Hayden's advice is keep it simple. They do well with the what we call the stun method, which is sheer, total, utter neglect. So you can, if you have a black thumb, you should be able to put these in the ground and make sure they get watered in the first few weeks and uh, they're gonna take off from there. It's a little weed management around the base so they're not competing with grasses and stuff when they're young. They're gonna, they're gonna thrive. They're native to this place, so uh, they know how to grow here. Freed finds the elderberry to be stunning as well and the perfect complement for a diverse landscape. The most important thing is you plant a couple of varieties, two or three cultivars, and you don't baby them too much. Sometimes we just take them out of the pot, set them on the ground, put a stake in them so you can tell that they're there, let them grow on top of the ground. The bigger the plant you plant, the faster you're gonna have elderberries. Uh, you wanna give them a little space between them because they get big. See how big this bush is? So this bush has been here for a long time and it's growing underneath apple trees and it's not a problem. It likes to be, have friends around. Multi-purpose, usefulness, a very useful plant. As an herbalist, Maze has heard all the skepticism about folk remedies and natural medicines. For him, Growing a stand of elderberries is like putting a medicine cabinet in your backyard. People have looked at these um, botanicals, and particularly elderberry has a lot of good research behind it, and have consistently seen not only that it helps in people when they're feeling sick, but that there's reasons why. When you look at what the pharmacology is, um, the immune system's action is bumped up, innate immunity is more active, and um, you also see a reduction in the ability of viruses to replicate. So there's a clinical evidence and a pharmacological evidence basis for these plants. And honestly, it doesn't mean that you can't take some aspirin when your fever hurts. Take both together and what you'll find is that your technological, modern technological medicine will help in the moment to reduce symptoms, but that herbal medicine will really help make you stronger, more well, and more vibrant in the long run. It's no joke. In sickness and in health, elderberries have had a lasting influence on people's well-being. When it comes to this kind of advice, it's always good to listen to your elders. In Burlington, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence.